Okay. Well, thank you, everybody, um, and welcome to today's session where we're going to be. It's not going to. Emily is going to be probably doing most of the work today. As always, I'm just here to do a welcome. Um, so, but if you don't know, so I'm, I'm Jen Sprout, Chief Exec of IOIC, um, and Emily, did you want to do a, yourself a quick introduction? Yeah. Hi, everyone. I'm Emily Darling, I'm Professional Development Manager at the IOIC. I see some familiar. Well, I see some familiar names, and I see a familiar face in Lee. So nice to see you here today. Yes. <laughs> Hi, Lee. <laughs> um, so thank you all for joining us today, where we're going to be talking about um, the IC Diagnostic, which is our latest and newest uh, member benefit that we launched what, two, three weeks ago now, was it, Emily? The 8th of October. Thank you. See, remember, sometimes people do remember what, uh, what we're doing. And really, this is a webinar where we wanted to come on and tell you a little bit about, about it, why we've launched it. And then really the main part of this session is going to be Emily is going to kindly do a demonstration so that you can really kind of understand how it works, some top tips of how you can make the most of it. Um, to ensure we really think this will be a great benefit to help you on your professional development and in your careers and on, on your journeys. So to start with, um, as we can see, I can still see some people joining, so they won't miss my bit. Emily is the most important bit. This is not the, the important bit. Um, so I'm just going to start with, well, why did we launch it? So why have we uh, developed the IC diagnostic? So essentially... Why we launched the diagnostic is that the IOIC at the heart of us is about championing professional standards. And as all of you probably well know, is we've got the IOIC profession map, which we originally launched in 2016. And then it had a massive review in 2020. And then it uh, had another light touch review. I think, Emily, was it 2020? 2022, yeah. Thank you. See, I'm, I do remember the you know, grey matter is getting worse and, uh, to remembering all these things. Um, and obviously when we developed that, it was a really, really detailed standards which sets out the knowledge and skills across all those areas and what you should be seeking in your knowledge and skills across each of the levels as you progress through your career. Um, and in that time, we have done a lot to really, really embed the profession map in everything that we do at IOIC, from how we think about membership grades and designation to the experience assessment that you do when you join aligns to the profession map. It's been embedded through all of our training and it's embedded really intricately to all of our all of our qualifications. But what we certainly felt um, in reflecting it was that it wasn't. Uh, we wanted to make it feel more interactive, to make it feel more real and to make it feel more personalised. And we certainly had lots and lots of member feedback over the years that they wanted more to help them on their career journeys and understanding where am I now and how do I get to where I want to get to? What are the areas I need to focus on and what are the learnings that I need? So um, as part of that, our, our main strategy as well at IOIC, which is we have some really big strategic goals to grow and develop our membership community and to champion professional standards. So this felt like the perfect way to blend all those together. Um, the project, I think we started this work, it was over a year or even more ago now. Um, so we've certainly been on a journey in developing it. But what we really, really hope is it's going to be something for you as a member that you can log into at any point as many times as you need to really, really understand where you sit against that profession map and against those standards. And most importantly, what it will do is to give you some of that personalised learning and personalised recommendations. And of course, it sits within the wider new careers hub that we've developed within that. So whilst you're there, there's also a lot, a lot of other um, supporting learnings in there as well and careers tools. But today we're going to focus really much on the diagnostic because I think that's the bit that we can really demo and demonstrate to you guys on how it works. And then at the end, really share some top tips on how you can make the most of it. So hopefully that's a good introduction and that's given everyone else a chance to join as well. Um, so really, Emily, shall I pass to you now, who is going to really, really explain to you and give you a demonstration of how the diagnostic works. And of course, any questions, feel free to drop them in the chat, raise your digital hand, come on screen at the end of it. We're, we're really here. To, we want you to make the most of it. Thank you, Jen. Yes. So as I said, I'm going to be doing a live demo. So always the slight nervous point, isn't it? So I'll do a live demo of the diagnostic for you. Um, and I'll quickly show you the careers hub as well. And then, yeah, I'll run through some top tips for using the diagnostic and some top tips for hopefully getting the most out of it. Um, and as I said, the session's recorded. So 
there will be reasonable amount of information. You can go back and look again, share with your team, share with colleagues. So just share my screen. So this is, hopefully most of you have visited. This is the Careers Hub. This is where the diagnostic is located. So if you're on the homepage of the Careers Hub, um, which you can navigate to from the IYC website, go to diagnostic. So we're gonna start with selecting your diagnostic. So the diagnostic has four levels. These are aligned to the profession map. As you know, we have four levels of the profession map. Um, they're also aligned to our membership grades. So we've got the IC diagnostic delivering. So this pulse is designed for practitioners working at or towards level one of the profession map. At this level, practitioners may be delivering high quality communication materials, focusing on content creation, design and daily management of communication infrastructure. Members at this level may be affiliate or associate member. We've then got the managing um, level. Practitioners working at or towards level two of the profession map. Um, at this level, you would manage and evaluate communication channels, plan and advise on communication, support leaders, and create advanced content, including complex and sensitive messages, such as change communication. Um, you might be an associate or a member. And we've got strategically advising um, at Practitioners working at or towards level three of the profession map. At this level, practitioners may be advising on communication strategies, developing channel infrastructure, evaluating processes and supporting leaders in becoming effective communicators. So members at that level may be member or certified members. And then we've got the final level, which is our leading. Um, this is designed for practitioners working at or towards level four of the profession map. Um, at this level, practitioners would be expecting to lead internal communication strategy, ensuring it aligns with business needs and integrating effective communication into your organization. So at this level, you may be a certified or a fellow. Now, of course, you can select to take any level of the diagnostic. We would recommend that you um, select the level that you're either working at or you aspire to achieve. If you're not sure, look at your member grade. And if you're still not sure, do come to us. We can, we're really, we are here to support. So don't, don't feel alone. So today I'm going to select the managing diagnostic. So simply click there and it will pop up for you. Uh, as you can see. So um, the diagnostic uh, is underpinned by the profession map. So there'll be statements on every area of the profession map. As you hopefully know, we have six areas of the profession map. So you simply go start now and there will be statements for you to go through. Now, at this point, I would mention it is really useful to use these hints. So as you can see, the statement is um, a level of practice, something you're doing. The hints really help to underpin this with the knowledge and skills you'd be expected to do that effectively. So it, sometimes you'll look at the statement, oh, I think I'm doing that quite well, I'm not sure. The hint will really hopefully help to contextualize um, whether you are doing that and also from the profession map, whether you have the skills and the knowledge to underpin to do that at a best practice and an effective level. So you simply choose one to five. So one is not at all confident, up to five, which is highly confident um, and everything in between. As I said, there are statements across all six levels, uh, all six profession areas. Um, you'll find, depending on what level you um, you select, there may be more statements on certain areas and less on other areas. For example, the delivering um, the delivering uh, level, you may not have many on the influencing and advising, but you will have quite a few on understanding people and cultures. So as I said, always select and look at the hint. So you simply go through and assess yourself and uh, against the um, against the statements. We'd recommend, there are normally about 20 statements, we recommend allowing maybe 15 minutes, so from our pilot is around 15 minutes, but really try and take time, be as honest as possible, shut down everything else if you can, and really think about it um, to make sure you get the most accurate um, and useful results. As you can see, I've already taken the pulse, I've taken all of our pulses a few times, as I'm sure you can uh, expect. So I can simply go here to view the report. I won't go through the whole pulse for you, um, but all you go, go through all the statements and at the end it will be submit your results and then you go and it will take you to your report page. So this is your report. As you see, you have an overall self-rated score. Now, don't be disheartened if it isn't as high as you would like it to be or you'd expect it to be. 
That is across all six areas and it is benchmarked against these high standards. So 68% is, is a great score. It's a medium, but it's a great score. Um, and it also means you've got things to work on. You've got tangible things to go, go and work on. So for a practical level, you've got your overall score there and it's, it's pulled out which areas I might want to focus on. And as you can see down here, um, uh, it gives you a, a, a score for each profession area. Just on the logistics with your report, you can print your report. So you just go here and you simply go to print. What I would recommend and a tip here is when printing, make sure all of these are expanded so that when you're printing, you have the expanded and all the information on your report. You can also go here and you can save to my documents. Now my documents is an area on the careers hub where you can save anything useful. You can save your reports, you can save CVs, you can save anything. You can find it up here on the navigation or you can download it. So with your report, we would recommend using this report as part of any internal performance reviews, objective setting um, processes. And therefore you may want to download it or print it and share it with a manager or team or colleagues. Further down, as I said, each area will have detailed results. And as you can see, it also pulls out, because you're not necessarily going to remember what you answered five minutes ago, it'll pull out how you rated yourself against each of these areas. So this will really help you when you move forward to the development planning stage. So as you can see, for myself, this has given, this has said that the areas I would need to focus on are influencing advising, creating, creating content and conversation and strategy planning and business acumen. We recommend, therefore, focusing on those areas to not overwhelm yourself. That isn't to say you might not want to go back and look at everything else, but those are the areas you might want to go ahead and focus on. So, for example, let's go to creating content and conversations. So it's pulled out my responses here and it's given me some actions. So this action will take me to the learning program. This action self-explanatory, we'll review the area on the profession map. So you can go and look in more detail, uh, maybe the knowledge and the skills around these activities. But I'll go to the learning program. So this goes forwards to your development planning and learning program. So as we've mentioned, so a top tip here, scroll up to the top, it gives you more information. <laughs> um, so we would recommend using the results from your report um, as part of your development planning processes. So you want to go ahead and set your objectives. If you need a template for that, there's a link there, they'll give you a template to start with. Um, and as part of your development planning, as I'm sure you're all very well aware, you'd need to be identifying learning to help you achieve those goals. We pulled out a few bits here that could be learning activities. Um, and remember, they don't just have to be things you're going and doing externally. There might be things you can do inside your organization or with your clients. And these are tailored towards whichever level you are, you have assessed yourself against. Um, and as you know, at the IOIC, we have quite a few CPT opportunities, a lot of them free for members. So top tip at this point, for all of these important pages, we recommend bookmarking them. So you simply go to the star, like most platforms, and you can bookmark it. As you can see, I've bookmarked all the learning programs then. So you can bookmark as many pages as you like, and you can just easily return at any point. So your learning program will then um, provide you with actions for each of the profession areas. These are created um, learning, so there's e-learning, there's resources, um, they'll all be created for you. Um, you don't need to complete all actions, as you'll see, there are quite a few on here. You don't need to complete everything. We'd recommend, there'll be a recommendation, normally around five actions. And we'd recommend trying to make that a mixture. So you might do an e-learning course from the Careers Hub. You might read a fact sheet from the IIC. You might go and do something internally. We There's some exercises there that we, we put um, that are created within this learning platform as well. So from the, your, with your learning program, you can also download that report. You obviously, you can set email reminders. So if you're not sure if you're gonna keep returning, you can turn your email reminders on um, and you can work your way through your learning program. When you've completed your learning program, we would then recommend you go back and reassess yourself. You can reassess yourself at any point, but that seems like a, maybe a good opportunity to be doing it. So we'd, we'd recommend with the diagnostic, assessing yourself six to 12 months, depending on how long your development plan is for. So you can go back and reassess yourself um, and then you can track your progress. So if I just go back to the report, as you can see here, as I said, I've done these quite a few times, if you've taken, if you've assessed yourself against one level several times, all your reports will pop up on this page. So you can go back and check when you did it 
when you didn't last. And then on your actual detailed results, you'll also be able to see when you last took it and how you progress. So as you can see, obviously I've been doing this as a test. So hopefully it'd be the other way around. Hopefully we'd have, um, we because they're going, they're going um, downwards. So hopefully we'd have so the top, the most recent you've done it, you've done the best and going down. But you can, so you can have all your reports in one place. And as I said earlier, I would recommend bookmarking things. So you can always come back to them. Um, so that's a quick, that's a quick whistle top whistle. I can never say that word. Whistle stops tour of the of the diagnostic of your report and your learning program. Um, but I think at this point, I will just take us back to the careers hub. So you can just go back to the home and just give you a quick look at the careers hub. So as you can see, that's all your diagnostic um, bits. So you've got your selection there. That'll take you back to your reports and learning programs. This is the development planning support. So if you go on here, you this is why I mentioned we've got a template. One thing I really should mention, when you're completing your learning, we always are suggesting that you go and log your learning on my CPD. So we remind us all throughout the learning program um, to go and log your learning. So my CPD, if you're not aware, is the IOIC's member, exclusive member area, where you can log, track, and reflect on your learning. So as part of your diagnostic and your development planning, you can also be working towards your CPD cycle of completion for the year. The IOIC recommends 40 um, CPD points. So these, what we would like to see is a flow. So you can go onto the platform, you can take your diagnostic, you then got your learning program, you can then through your learning program progress. You can log your learning on my CPD. Um, you can reflect on on my CPD, and then hopefully you can also look ahead and, and look to your CPD cycle of completion. Um, and then back to the careers hub. So the careers hub itself, where the diagnostic is located, has uh, as Jen mentioned earlier, just a wealth of useful um, tools. So we've got CV and interview tools. We've got a CV builder, a CV360. You can check your CV, interview 360. Under my career, we've got career assessments. I've done quite a few of these. They're really, really interesting. I would recommend. Again, the aptitude test. There's an error checking aptitude test, which is incredible. I always thought I was quite good at error checking. I might need to improve some things. Um, you've got your coaching hub. We've got career management. So you've got career management development tips career pathways, and you've got the newsroom. Um, under my learning, you can go to e-learning, and there's just a wealth of e-learning here. They're short courses, they're all contained within the um, platform, and you can just take them at any point and you can return to them. So as you can see down here, culture and diversity, creativity and innovation, uh, language and writing, there's some really useful resources. We just recommend having a look you can search through here. Um, once you're on the Careers Hub, you will hope you'll get a, a Careers Weekly newsletter. You can opt out, but it's currently set for you to receive that. And the more you explore the Careers Hub, the more the more um, curated that will be um, and personalised for you. Um, I think I've covered most things. Um, so that's the Careers Hub. So what I'm just going to do quickly is, because I, I've covered quite a lot quite quickly, I will just summarize some top tips. So using the diagnostic, if you aren't sure which level to use, we'd uh, recommend looking at your membership grade or asking us for support. We'd recommend allowing 30 minutes for the assessment and to read your report. So it's about 15 minutes to do the assessment and about 15 minutes to really read your report. Use those hints when completing your assessment. They are very valuable and really useful. Bit of a silly one, but be as honest as possible. This is to help you. This is personalised. So be as honest as possible, and that is often. Sometimes we are, as a profession, we're not as confident as we maybe should be. We underestimate ourselves. So be honest. If you think you're good at something, assess yourself that you're good at that. That um, and using the information um, provided, and then going forward, focus on your identified areas of development. If you go and you have all six areas to look at, you may feel overwhelmed. So start by focusing on the area that maybe you've identified as needing the most improvement or that is most useful for you in your role and go from there and bookmark pages. It is, it's really useful um, to keep being able to go back and find those really easily. Getting the most from the diagnostic. So 
as I mentioned earlier, we would recommend using the results to help inform and structure your development planning. So we've given you support with that if you need it. Um, many of you won't, many of you, will, you know, do this do this regularly, use the diagnostic to help structure and inform your development planning. Um, we're providing you with some curated learning, but go away and find other learning, talk to your organization, talk to your manager. Use as part of your workplace objective setting and re review processes. So if you're comfortable, take the diagnostic and share it with your, um, with your manager, with your colleagues, um, and use it as part of that objective setting. Similarly, if you're a team leader, we recommend asking your asking your, um, your, your, your colleagues to take the diagnostic and then working with them to make those improvements. You can use a diagnostic to assess the skills in your team, the gaps in your team, um, and work together to address those. Log your learning on my CPD um, and work towards your CPD cycle of completion. Um, reassess yourself every six to 12 months. That's what we would recommend. But some people will do it more often. Some will do it a little bit less frequently. But six to 12 months um, will work usually quite nicely with whatever development processes you, um, you work with. And use this to progress your membership. So as I mentioned earlier, the levels are mapped not only against the profession map, but they're also mapped against the, your member grades. So therefore, if you're taking a certain level and actually you come out, you've self-assessed yourself very high or you've progressed and you've moved yourself, you've moved your, um, your assessment upwards, then go, go and look at upgrading your membership. Jen mentioned earlier about you, your self-assessment. Use, use this to progress your membership as well. Um, and the, hopefully we can see you moving, moving through the grades um, up to fellowship with us. Um, lovely. So I think, I think that's everything. So I'll stop sharing. So hopefully that was reasonably useful. Yes. <laughs> he has a heart coming up there. Thank you, Misty, for the heart. That was great. Um, no, that was really useful. And I think he, what say we could we could be here going through everything in every step, but it was really to make sure you understood where everything was and the top tip. So is there anybody that's got any kind of questions or anything that we thought was, you know, we went through too fast? Do you want us to go back at and go, can I have a look at that again? Could you explain that to me in a little bit more detail? We're very happy to do that. So is there, you can be virtual, you can be chat, you can, you know, however you want. Someone's very helpful, thank you. And I won't be offended if you go, what was that you said? <laughs> <laughs> oh, thanks, Misty. I haven't got a question, guys, but oh, um, just a reflection, really. I think you've done a fantastic job on this, I have to say. I think it's a brilliant leap forward. The profession map itself is great, but it, it, to me, it was always quite unwieldy when you see it in on paper. There's yeah. so much detail to it, and this actually takes it to a whole new place in terms of practicality. Um, so the diagnostic is brilliant. I think you've shown me some stuff that I didn't realise was on the careers hub as well. So mm -hmm. just well done. You know, I think this is a massive leap forward in terms of, of taking the profession into a new place. And uh, yeah, very welcome and very timely. Thank you. Thanks, Lee. That's lovely. And and like I say, this project, well, Emily's been leading on it for a long time. And like I say, it's taken a long time and we have been. Uh, really rigorous in the process from the selection to the consultation with other membership bodies to then making sure we've um, put through the diagnostic design through our professional development team, our academics, to then as well to many people do some UAT testing for us and members from different grades. So we really hope, but um, we want to make it feel usable. And as you say, Lee, it's the right time, isn't it? And I think that we, one of our aspirations at IYC, we have lofty goals. We want to grow the community. We want to lead thinking, we want to champion standards. We want to make internal communication a career of choice that brings in a future type pipeline of talent. But to do all of that, we need to make it feel accessible and tangible and build that confidence and help our, our members feel confident. Um, because I think that hopefully this will, will be a tool to really, really do that. So thank you so much. Thank you. And I was going to say in the you, chat, was there any questions or people just saying they, they like it? <laughs> you hit that nail on the head. I think when we were looking at this project, the professional map is excellent. It's fantastic. We absolutely, it's always going to be that resource, which is why we, you know, send you back, maybe have a look at it. But but it it is quite a tome, quite unwieldy is a word I maybe associated sometimes. And I think it was how we can consolidate. And as you said, so people can go and assess themselves. We had the self-assessment handbook, but you, you, I think it, you'd really have to have the motivation to do that. We did it as part of the diploma. So this hopefully is accessible that anyone can go and do it. 
And, it, and it's also that reflective mindset. So you're going and looking and assessing yourself and do it whenever you want, do it digitally, do it online, share with your colleagues. So that, yeah, that's that was part of our motivation, I think. Really good. And, uh, you know, I like things like setting email reminders and things like that. It's just the sheer practicality of what you've baked into it. So it's it's just super practical and, and a, yeah, a really, a really nice leap forward. Well done. Thanks, Lee. And I remember our, our first conversation in 2016 when I wrote the first draft of the Fresher Map. You were one people I came to and I asked. This, this it's is been a bit. while. <laughs> <laughs> so thank you so much. And if there is no other questions or comments, we'll we'll leave that. We're going to make this an on-demand resource for other members. But the other thing I think at the end of it um, that we express, if you have any issues, as Emily said, we are here. Email us any questions, any point. We want to help you. Um, also as well as you use it and you find if you find something doesn't work for you or you think that's a bit clunky or that's not let us know we might not be able to fix it straight away but we want to always see if we can make improvements um, and give feedback to us and also as well if you use it and you find it really good and you're willing to share your story with other members and with other IC professionals that would be great because one way we grow together is if we share together um, so one thing we want to do is try and get more stories out to help others um, see the power of the tools that are available to them so mm. on that note um should we emily will should we leave everybody there everyone seems to have no questions but you know exactly where you, we are anytime that you need us yeah and Thank i just you both. i will just quickly echo jen yeah as you said we're very close to this now so yeah if anyone finds or they need more information on the platform because you don't want to overwhelm or you need better navigation yeah please do let us know because it is a it is a living hopefully it's a living evolving tool that we want to make as most useful as possible thank you thank you everybody have great days see you later fantastic guys thank you bye bye